Okay, good morning. I'm Hidalgo County Judge Richard F. Cortez. I'm the chairman of the Hidalgo County Drainage District Number 1. Today's board meeting is being conducted within the parameters of Governor Abbott's suspension of certain open meeting law requirements to the extent necessary to allow for telephonic and video conference meetings in response to this COVID-19, even though three of us are physically present here. Notice that this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. The board is meeting by the use of Zoom software and telephone transmission, which allows two-way communication for members of the public during public comments. This meeting is being broadcast live and online. A recording of the meeting is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. The time now is 9.48. I call the meeting to order. We'll begin with a roll call to establish a quorum. Good morning, David Fuentes, Precinct 1. Good morning, Everardo Villarreal, Precinct 3. Richard Cortez, County Judge, that constitutes a quorum. Mr. Sassine or Jaime, could you lead us in prayer, please? Yes, sir. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we seek your clarity and your peace over all that's occurring in our country today. We know you are with us and for us as we gather to seek your counsel. We continue to pray for the judge and four commissioners that you've appointed to lead this great county of ours. We pray for our mayor, school board members, city council, police chief, district attorney, sheriff, judges, and all who serve our local communities, Lord. Strengthen them with your wisdom and grace for the heavy burden they carry. May they manage their teams with love, keep their heart pure and their eyes turned to your face as they work in the best interest of the people they are called to serve. We continue to pray for the first responders and their families. We lift them up to you, Father God. We ask for your grace, love, and wisdom be granted to the doctors and nurses dealing with the ill. We ask for your hand of peace and comfort over them and their families. We lift up to, all, to you all those that are battling illnesses, Father God. We ask for your healing hand over them. Provide their families with peace that you can only bring through your son, Jesus. We praise you for the healing that's come through you. And we continue to pray for peace over the families of those that have lost loved ones. Father God, we pray for the families affected by the recent rain events. We pray for our county, state, and nation as we deal with the flood. We ask for your guidance and protection over all the workers dealing with the rain events, Father God. May the Holy Spirit dwell in us so our love for you will not be lukewarm but hot. May the fire of your love fill our hearts with an eagerness to please you in all things, Father God. May there be no rivals to our love and devotion to you who is our all. Scripture reminds us that the more we seek you, the more we will find you. May we seek you in everything we do, and may we work as we've been working for you, Lord. Lead our surrendered hearts to the path of your peace. In this name we ask all this. Amen. Amen. Do we have anybody sign up for open forum? No, Judge. Okay. Next time is the approval of the consent agenda. Yes, sir, Judge. On the consent agenda, we have no more operations, approval check register, um, and everything's in order, vetted by my team. Uh, we recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item. Yes, sir. 5A consideration, approval, resolution, authorizing issuance, sale, and deliver of the Dow County Drainage Number 1 Unlimited Tax Improvement Bonds Taxable Series 2021 under the provisions of Chapter 56, Texas Water Code Payable from the Levy of a Direct and Continuing Annual Ad Valorem Tax Authorized Pursuant to Chapter 49 and Chapter 46, Texas Water Code, prescribing the term and form thereof, providing for the payment of the principal thereof, and making other provisions regarding such bonds and matters incident thereto. We do have uh, both legal count bond counsel, Mr. Ramirez, and we have Mr. Hinojosa, um, our financial advisor. Uh, I believe there was a small presentation that our financial advisor was gonna go through regarding uh, the issues of this and what the, the effect would be on the tax levy uh, for our taxpayers. Uh, uh, he's got a presentation that talks about with this issuance, what the impact would be, which would be minimal. Uh, and then we'll make a presentation or briefly uh, uh, present to the board uh, the possibility of selling the rest of the bonds that we have. Uh, the good news overall in summarizing everything, he'll summarize it, that the commitment that, that was made by the board uh, was three cents would be the ultimate impact uh, to the tax base uh, once we were done with all the bond sales and it looks like we would be at two cents, but I'll have a financial advisor uh, kind of brief, brief the board on that and, and they open it for questions. Uh, Mr. Hinojosa? Good morning, uh, members of the board, uh, members of the board, and, and uh, uh, long time no see, and I wish I could be with you guys there 
this morning. Um, as uh, Mr. Cecina has pointed out, um, we prepared a presentation. I don't know, Raul, if, if we can share that on the screen or uh, how do I go about doing that? Uh, if we cannot, uh, basically, if you all recall when we had the bond election uh, uh, presented to the voters uh, years back, you, you had a tax rate of 49 cents. And at the time we said, that if we were to issue these bonds, uh, it will have a three cent uh, tax rate increase. Well, the resolution that is before you this morning is contemplating selling about $22.8 million of bonds. And um, basically um, those are being placed or sold to um, the Texas Water Development Board. And the Water Development Board has approved purchasing your bonds at a 0% interest rate. We have uh, uh, on your behalf and certainly with the help from staff and consultants that have been very instrumental in, <clears throat> in bringing us to the, to the Water Development Board, we have received not only the 0% loan on this, uh, on this loans, on this bonds of 22.8, but also have received a grant uh, uh, that, has, that is gonna assist in the, in the construction of the various projects. The, the bonds will be issued or contemplated to be issued over 30 years. And literally the, uh, the payments on this are about $763,000 a year for, to pay back the $22.8 million. The impact on the tax rate, which currently stands at about 4.81 cents, will be pretty negligible. It'll go up from uh, the 4.81 cents today to about 5.16% or 5.16 cents but that is if property values remain the same. Uh, we are hopeful and expectant that property values will rise uh, just like they had in previous years. Uh, in fact, in 20 to 21, the property value went up by 6.2%. Our pro formas are showing 0% growth and thus if there's no growth, then the tax rate will have to go up by, you know, one third of a penny. Uh, and, and we suspect that, that uh, if property values do grow, that you probably will have no tax rate impact. Uh, while we were doing this exercise, uh, we were tasked by your staff, by Mr. Zassin, uh, about the benefit of borrowing the balance of uh, bonds that were authorized by the voters versus waiving another year or two years to take on the various projects. Uh, uh, after this financing of $22.8 million, the district will have another 83.9 million that have been authorized, but unsold. So if you were to sell those bonds in the future, let's say in the next couple of months or three months, we think interest rates will still be somewhat uh, uh, attractive and thus uh, uh, the interest rate we think would be less than 2.75% going out 25 years. Of course, that will be, uh, 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 there will be an interest cost on that. And, and then the question was, okay, what if, if we split it? What will be the benefit of splitting the bonds in two tranches, doing half this year and half the next year? Uh, you probably, some of you who follow the markets have, have heard about the, the fears on inflation and its costs have risen, construction costs, raw materials uh, have risen. Uh, the Fed has uh, expressed, uh, you know, maybe raising interest rates in order to slow down the cost of inflation. So uh, uh, we think that a way of, if, if the district is not ready in receiving the additional funds to do all these projects, that maybe hedging you know, uh, by selling one piece down, one piece next year could be a, a, another strategy versus selling all in one chunk uh, later this year. Uh, the important here in your message to the voters is that uh, because of interest rates being as attractive as they are and, and have, and with the help from the Water Gun Board, the tax rate would not exceed uh, over two cents uh, if all things remains the same. Uh, so you told the voters you would need three cents. Uh, we, we feel pretty confident uh, if, if rates, you know, remain where they are, 
uh, that you should be able to do this with uh, no more of a two cent increase for the entire program. So with that, I'll stop and I'll entertain any questions you may have. Overall, Mr. Hinojosa, how much is the, is the district going to save by issuing these $22 million at 0% versus what we projected in the 2.99? Uh, I would say at least um, at least uh, eight or nine million dollars. So in addition to the nine million dollar grant, uh, nine million dollars in savings, we're looking at about an eighteen million dollar impact, positive impact for the district. That's right. And, that's and, why and actually, if you think about it, Commissioner, good question. Uh, the 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 district's actually getting an additional grant from the Water Bill Board for about nine point eight million dollars, I believe. So not only are you saving an interest cost, the water government is also giving you another $9 million. And this, this is through a, a new program that was created by the, by the, by the, by the state of Texas to help, um, to help drainage districts like yourselves to get you know, all kinds of help in order to mitigate uh, drainage concerns in the future. So. And I think it's important for us to recognize that the court really has supported this whole flood infrastructure funding program, the Proposition 8 that was in, on the ballot a uh, year and a half ago or so. So I want to thank everybody for their support and, and pushing for this. I think it makes a tremendous impact to our taxpayers. Instead of going up to three cents, we can keep it at two cents uh, and do the same number of projects. So I want to thank the board uh, for their support and also thank the the uh, Raul Sassin and his staff for all the work that they did to get this done. So do you have a motion, Commissioner? I make a motion to approve this resolution. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Marini, is that everything proper, Chewy, for the action that's taken? Uh, yes, good, good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Uh, you are approving today the uh, authorizing the issuance of those bonds, and you're also approving the grant agreement, uh, which sets up all of the terms and conditions with respect to that grant. So we recommend your approval. Thank you, Chu. Do we need to do a, Do we need to do it again? Do we need to pass it no, again? Sorry? No, that we're was, okay. That was his motion. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you. May, item 5B. The discussion series and action of the outcome of the one pre enrollment and enrollment policy and procedures pending final legal review. Um, we are act, we're asking to update our pre enrollment and enrollment policy to allow us to get staff on board quicker. Uh, the issue um, uh, you know, emails and things like that, uh, addresses and stuff. It's already in place at the county, so we're just following the lead on that. We ask for uh, your approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item C, discussion consideration, possible action on the attached Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration Clearinghouse Policy. Um, this is a standard policy to check uh, the, uh, I guess, the, the statuses of, of our, our drivers, our, our CDL drivers. Uh, so we were recommend approval. So, so second. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item two, discuss creation and possible action on the attached general consent form for limited queries of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration Drug and Alcohol Clearance. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Adam D. Discussion consideration of the action on the attached e verified memorandum of standing from employees between Dr. One and the Department of Homeland Security. Second. Second. Motion carries. Thank you, Adam D. Discussion consideration of the board's approval of the above item requesting authority from train district general manager does need to execute the electronic signature of the e verified memorandum of standing. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Adam E. Request to approve our final negotiated professional services agreement and help me negotiate Inc. as it relates to professional engineering services for Region 15 Flood Planning, CA to Region 120 approval for negotiation by the Board of Directors, Read 221, subject final review and compliance with House Bill 495. Now, just for clarification, Raul, this is going to ultimately be paid by the Water Development Board, correct? 
That is correct, Commissioner. Yes, thank you for that clarification. This is a 100% grant that's being paid by, by the Water Dome Board as part of the uh, flood, uh, Region 15 flood planning group. Yes, sir. Motion to approve. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I don't have a question to approve except for the professional consulting and web hosting service agreement with EV Pass of Pump Inc. as it relates to web design and development for Region 15 Lower Rogan Flood Planning, CHD 120080518, with authority for the general manager of designation to sign the agreement. So, final review, review and compliance with House Bill 1295. Same, same condition on this one, correct? That's correct. Yes, sir. It will be a reimbursement item as part of the Region 15. Yes, sir. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Six A request to approve supplementary agreement number two plus professional engineering service contracts issued in 119 0390 with Tesby Infrastructure Group, Inc. for the project April 2018 bond return to project 11B. Reflect your rise and exhibit B work schedule with extended termination date of September 30, 2022. Simply review and compliance House Bill 495. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two, request and approval supplement agreement number two for work petition number one for the professional drink service contract CCD 119 039 with Tesla Structure Group Inc. for the project phase of drink 2018 bond referendum project 11B to reflect a revised period of service to end September 30, 2022. So we review class house bill 495. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, request and approval supplement agreement number two to the professional engineering service contract CCD 119 0509 with Miller and Hat Inc. for the project East Mercedes 2018 bond return to project F8 to reflect the revised schedule D work schedule with an extended termination date of December 31st, 2022. Subject legal review and compliance house bill 1295. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two, request and approval. Public agreement number two and the work authorization number one for measure engineering service contract CDE 119 005049 with Mellon and Hunt Inc. for the project like East Mercedes 2018 bond return to project 10A to reflect your vice period of service to end December 31st, 2022. So, the review of the class council of formality. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I got a ski request to approve supplement agreement number two for professional engineering service contract CSG 119-023-0423 with CSG Group for the project Mile 11 North Texas Boulevard 2018 bottom from the project 23 reflects the revised exhibit e work schedule with an extended termination date of July 31st, 2024. So, the review and compliance House Bill 1295. This is part of the uh, fifth project, and that extension is for the two years to coincide with the flood infrastructure fund schedule that was submitted to the Water Development Board. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Adam. Two requests and approval supplementary agreement number two for work authorization number one for professional engineering service conduct CCD 119 023 CHA Group for the Project 11 North. Uh, North in Texas Boulevard, 2018, bar from the Project 23 to reflect your vice chair service in July 31st, 2024. Subject legal review, compliance council 1295. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And in D, approval of vacation payment number three in the amount of 44,635.60 from Venture Contractors LLC pertains to session contract number 1831 0915, project engineer with London and Jones, serving in general and recommend approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. D2, approval application application number six, in the amount of 259,871.40 from Science Brothers Construction LT, presenting concession contract from ACP1 1974 project engineer LNG consultant, serving in order and recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 7 8, 1 approval application payment number 1 in the amount of 144,711 from Science Brothers Construction LLC pertaining to session contract with ACD 1 2063 Project Engineer Javi Nervosa. We recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We do not have anything today from the executive session. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I think that concludes all of our agenda items. I have a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries.
Everyone have a great day. Thank you. Give me just a moment, please. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, Commissioner's Court meeting. Good morning, I'm Hidalgo County Judge Richard F. Cortez. Today's Commissioner's Court meeting will be conducted within the parameters of Governor Abbott's suspension of certain open meeting law requirements to the extent necessary to allow for telephone or video conference meetings in response to this COVID-19 matter, even though all of us are, are present here physically. Notice that this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. The court is meeting by the use of Zoom software and the telephone transmission, which allows for two-way communication for members of the public during the public comments. This meeting is being broadcast live and online. A recording of this meeting is being made and will be made available to the public at a later date. The time now is eight minutes after 10. I call the meeting to order and start with a roll call with Precinct 1. Good morning, David Fuentes, Precinct 1. Eddie Gunther, Precinct 2. Everardo Villarreal, Precinct 3. Calvin Torres, Precinct 4. Rich Cortez County Judge, that constitutes a quorum. Today we're honored to have uh, Lance Corporal Jose Villarreal. He's served in the U.S. Marine Corps, uh, Corps from November of 6 of 2006 to November the 7th of 2011. Corporal, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. I'd like to express my appreciation to the Commissioner's Court for having me here today to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for your service. Thank you very much, Lance Corporal, and thank you for your service. Today, we're also honored to have the Honorable Juan Jose Pena, Jr. He's the Justice of the Peace for Precinct 3, Place 2. Judge, would you please lead us in prayer? Thank you, Judge. Uh, we could all please stand and bow our heads. Dear Lord, please listen to our prayer as we humbly ask for your aid during this trying time. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen and encourage all those who have been affected by this virus. Please watch over those who mourn their loved ones and be with those battling through COVID-19. Please inspire vigilance and patience in our community leaders, healthcare professionals, educators, businesses, and families as we do our best to continue serving our neighbors. We ask for your protection and for your guidance so that we may, may all come together to prosper and eradicate er, this disease that has caused hardship on many of us. Lord, we also ask that you grant us your knowledge to make the best decisions for all the residents of this great county. May God bless Hidalgo County and may God bless Texas. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Judge. Next item is your approval of the consent agenda. Judge Commissioners, with your permission, uh, under consent agenda, I'd like to pull uh, consent agenda item 9A, 10A1 and 2, 11B, 18A, I'm sorry, let, let, let me back up, my apologies. Uh, the only two uh, agenda items I'm pulling is uh, 9A from consent and 10A1 and 2. Make a motion to approve the rest of your consent agenda. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Consent agenda item 9A, Sergio. Um, are you on the line, Sergio? I think that one's going to be subject to Yes. Um, yes, I am, sir. Okay, do you, you want to just clarify real quickly under 9A with respect to the uh, CARES briefing? Consent agenda item 9A? 9A? Uh, 
Hold on real quick. Let me go into that one. Nine A. Uh, this is yes. This is going to be for uh, wireless data services for the public defender's office, which are they're doing remote work. Uh, so uh, we will be bringing this back on our regular agenda item that we have for CARES expenditures uh, next week uh, for approval as a CARES reimbursable item. Okay. So do you recommend action right now? Uh, yes, we, we recommend action for the court to, to take action. That way we can get the procurement process going okay. so and issue the PO. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And again, that was subject to legal, uh, final legal. Judge Commissioners, uh, item consented to item 10A1 and 2 for the record. Commissioner Fuentes will be abstaining from your discussion and or action. I'm asking the court uh, to please take action. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Let the record show that Commissioner Fuentes abstained from voting or discussion of this matter. Thank you. Thank you. I think that concludes all of our consent agenda. We'll move into open forum. Daniel, do we have any participants for open forum? Yes, we have uh, seven uh, signed up. First up, we have Flor Martinez over the phone. Ms. Martinez. Ms. Martinez. Sí. Sí, Ms. Martínez. Buenos días, comisionado. Buenos días. Hay un límite de tres minutos. Yo le voy a avisar cuando le sobra un minuto, ¿ok? Ok. Ok, adelante, por favor. Buenos días, comisionados. Mi nombre es Flor Martínez. Yo vivo en la colonia Mi Sueño y soy miembro de Lupe. Hoy les hablo porque quiero darles mi apoyo para la ley del levantamiento de basura, ya que nosotros necesitamos vivir en colonias limpias y seguras. El condado siempre nos ha ayudado a mantenerlas limpias, pero necesitamos más mantenimiento para el bien de la comunidad y así disminuir los incendios y las inundaciones. Espero y pase esa legislatura y muchas gracias por su tiempo. Gracias. Gracias. Judge Commissioners, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Flor Martinez is with the organization Lupe. She's calling in and thank, uh, thank, uh, thanking. Uh, with respect to the uh, uh, trash initiative and trash pickup that the court has done, uh, but uh, she is asking for that there's still uh, a lot more need for help uh, for the health and safety of our residents. Next okay, one. next up we have Noem Morikin. Um, over the phone, one okay. moment. Maroquín. Sí, buenas tardes. Buenos días. Ay, sí. I, I'm sorry, señorita Maroquín. Si sí, hay un límite de, de, disculpa, hay un límite de tres minutos, yo le voy a avisar cuando le sobra un minuto. ¿Ok? Ok, ¿usted me va a marcar? Sí, sí, yo le digo cuando le sobra un minuto. Hay, hay un límite de tres minutos, ¿ok? Ok, está bien. Ok, adelante, por favor. Ah, mire, buenos días, este... Yo, yo soy Noemí Marroquín, hablo de la, de la colonia Eduardo IV, este, solo hablo verdad para pedirles apoyo sobre el levantamiento de basura, este, ahora con lo, de lo, con lo de los huracanes y las tormentas que ha habido, pues sí hemos tenido problemas con estancamientos de agua y realmente muchas en la colonia donde estamos nosotros, este, verdad, ahí... Hay bastante basura, de hecho yo tengo bastantes ramas que hago, les se cayeron y les pedimos ayuda porque sabemos que nos han querido estar apoyando y estamos agradecidos con ustedes, pero sí nos gustaría, ¿verdad?, contar con su apoyo total de levantamiento de basura. Ok, thank you, gracias, Ms. Marroquín. Judge Commissioner. Gracias. Gracias. Uh, Ms. Marroquín is with the Colonia or Subdivision Eduardo IV. Uh, she is asking uh, for help or assistance with the trash pickup. Uh, she is indicating uh, that the hurricanes and storms as of late uh, and as well as the issues with flooding uh, have put a, uh, uh, in essence a burden on the community and, and in that subdivision. And so there's lots of trash and brush pickup uh, still to be done, but she is thankful for the help that has been provided, uh, but that does need more help uh, in those areas. 
Next up, we have Jesus Mendoza over the phone. Mendoza? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Mendoza, there is a three minute time limit. I will advise when there is one minute and I will start when you start, okay? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, the following vital information will be submitted to Judge Cortez so it can be shared with the health and medical authorities. I have been homebound for more than 10 years with a life threatening electro hypersensitivity EHS, <clears throat> which is caused and aggravated by exposure to the same wireless microwave radiation reaching children and teachers at school. I have been violently ill several times. I'm sleep deprived and in pain all the time. Every day is a different torture. This is a horrible way to die. My EHS has been recognized by federal and state agencies and by court as a physical medical condition and as a disability. EHS proves conclusively that exposure to levels of radiation below the federal safety limits causes severe harm and disabilities and that exposing children to microwave radiation defeats the purpose of education. It is estimated that without knowing, more than 50% of the population is already suffering symptoms of EHS. Children, teachers, doctors, attorneys, and even a director of the World Health Organization are suffering from EHS. Please see we are the evidence.org. Despite the fact that electrosensitivity is reaching pandemic proportions, most doctors are in the dark on denial and continue misdiagnosing and mistreating with harmful drugs and invasive procedures, symptoms that disappear with just reducing exposure to microwave radiation. A law firm filed a federal lawsuit with evidence of how cell phones used by our children emit more than five times the levels allowed by federal law when even short doses of radiation about the federal safety limits causes harm even to healthy and strong adults. And seven law firms are warning school officials of the potential civil and criminal ability of exposing children unnecessarily to harmful microwave and 5G radiation when an expensive hardware broadband internet is readily available. Some of the symptoms of EHS include pain, swelling of vital organs, swelling of face, head and eyes, symptoms of heart attack and stroke rashes and loss of skin, flu and allergy symptoms and stomach, digestive troubles, insomnia, vision, hearing, memory, speech concentration and breathing problems, altered blood sugar levels, impaired sense of smell, miscarriages and birth defects. Scientific studies prove most doctors are confounding the symptoms of electrosensitivity with symptoms of other illnesses, including autism, ADHD, dyslexia, PTSD, heart attack, stroke, multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, hypothyroidism, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome, diabetes, and major depression and suicidal tendencies. As detailed by the request to protect our children submitted to the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Education, Dr. Miguel Cardona, and posted on the case materials of Jay Mendoza at wirelesswatchblog.org, wirelesswatchblog.org. Ladies and gentlemen, your prompt response to this evidence can save the lives of children and teachers and other defenseless and unsuspecting victims. Thank you very much for giving serious consideration to this matter. Respectfully, thank you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Daniel, our next presenter. Yes, that's, we have Ms. Fern McClarty in person. For clarity, there is a three minute time limit. I will advise when there is one minute and I will start when you start. Here I am again, trying to explain that increasing taxes on the poor will only create more poor. It is a fact that it is hard to understand by our elected <coughs> officials. I am going to say this slowly so everyone can understand that our county elected officials have gone to Austin to create a law that would allow them to impose a tax or a fee, whatever you want to call it, on the people in the unincorporated areas and some cities for the purpose of providing solid waste collection. Well, when you say it that way, it doesn't sound so bad. But increasing taxes is not good. But it doesn't sound too bad. But the question is, why go to Austin to create a new law for only Hidalgo County? The reason, ladies and gentlemen, is that our elected officials are creating a new taxing body and they want to attach this new cost to your property taxes. Hidalgo County would then have a drainage and solid waste tax. We're watching and I know that just like the hospital district, it'll kind of lean over and it will go into everyone with Hidalgo County. So we're, we're watching and I hope the people that are in this room understand that this is a bill that will increase their taxes and if you do not pay them, 
it will be added to your property taxes. So I'm hoping everyone understands that. Everyone should remember that if the annual tax is not paid by January 30th, it could increase your property uh, uh, percentage to 24% the first year. Now, if those of us who live in the city failed to pay our waste bill and all, the only thing that would happen there is our service would be terminated, but it would not be added to our tax bill. The result of this great plan would be that families would not only be poor, but homeless. The family, the federal government has recognized that people need financial assistance during this time of crisis, and yet our elected officials just keep trying to add one more tax on, on everyone. This bill would force to people to pay more, and a majority problem is going to lose their property. Uh, today, 11C Precinct 2 is creating another position at almost 70,000. Precinct 4, uh, 1,894,000. Uh, salary, uh, we understand salary, we understand the road. What is other? And it is the biggest one, 656000 for other. Can you please explain this? And then the last one is 18B1, and this is uh, 4079337 and it's having to go up, I believe, because of all the cost of all the lumber and the, su the supplies and the the market materials and stuff. Well, once again, uh, we in Hidalgo County are poor. Our Mr. property Mr. values Mr. have gone up. So think about it. Thank you, ma'am. Next, we have Portfilia Reyes in person. Good morning, Ms. Reyes. Good morning, uh, buenos días. Buenos días, Ms. Reyes. Hay, hay un límite de tres minutos. Yo le aviso cuando le sobra un minuto, ¿ok? Ok. Ok, gracias. Yo soy Porfiria Reyes, represento Colonia Polmex Division. Soy miembro de la Lupe y estoy apoyando la ley SB 594 y espero y pase a ser ley. Por bien del pueblo, por favor, no nos dejen en el olvido y luchar hasta que sea aprobada. A mí me importa porque tener colonias y calles limpias, vivimos saludables y libres de inundaciones. También el costo sea accesible para nosotros. Como yo soy trabajadora temporal, so no puedo pagar un máximo de cantidad. Este, por favor, apóyenos y apoyar esa ley, que sea efectiva, que sea ley. Gracias. Gracias. Judge Commissioners, uh, in a nutshell, uh, she is, uh, Ms. Reyes is with the organization Lupin. She's here advocating for uh, Bill uh, 594 for it to become, or for it to come to fruition. Uh, and uh, she is emphasizing the need for uh, clean, uh, safe neighborhoods, uh, and that uh, House Bill 94, uh, or the, uh, uh, the bill 594, uh, should be endorsed uh, and made into law. Next up, we have Daisy. Palomejue in person. Ms. Lume, I'm, I'm sorry. Palomejue. Okay, okay. Hay un límite de tres minutos, yo le aviso cuando le sobra un minuto, okay? Sí, está bien. Okay. Go ahead. Buenos días. Soy Daisy Palomejue, representando a la colonia Mi Sueño, y soy miembro de la Lupe. Vengo por el motivo de que se me quemó mi traila junto con el poste de luz y me gustaría saber si me pueden ayudar con la limpieza porque no me pueden conectar la luz uh, por toda la basura que está en el terreno. Gracias. Gracias. Judge Commissioners, this is Palomecas with the organization Lupe. Uh, she unfortunately uh, lost her home uh, it, uh, uh, as a result of a fire and she's asking for assistance and help with the cleanup uh, uh, as a result of the fire and uh, the surrounding area, uh, because of the, uh, of the uh, lack of cleanup, uh, she's unable right now to uh, facilitate a, a utility hookup by way of light or electricity. Next up, we have Maria Tijerina in person. Tijerina? Yes. Okay. There's a three-minute time limit. I'll advise when there's one minute. Thank okay? You. All right. Thank you. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. 
My name is Maria Tijerina, and I'm a leader of Colonia Gulimeros Phase 2 in Donna, Texas. And the reason I'm here today is again for the trash. We have a lot of colonias in Hidalgo County that are in necessity of uh, the trash. I know there was a proposal that was passed, that was brought up. Um, I understand it was a, in reference to trash containers, uh, bringing them into the colonias. And apparently it wasn't passed by, or it wasn't you know, brought up, or at least our colonias were not informed of it, so we could at least have that voice. It was denied. So the reason is, again, the trash. We got, uh, with all the weather that we've had, we've got so much trash that's accumulating on the street curves, and it's uh, becoming uh, breeding for the mosquitoes. Rats are accumulating there too, and it's causing a big uh, drainage problem also. So we want, we're here, we're all here, the colonias are here for that reason that you know our trash pickup, uh, I know that you're all trying to do your best for the colonias, for the trash pickup, but um, we need more, more effort, you know, to make sure that our streets are clean from all the brush that's accumulating, and that also avoids all the trash that's accumulating on county roads. Uh, I've gone through some county roads that have too much, too much trash, and I mean, I feel sorry for those people that live down that road because they feel abandoned and nobody has done anything about it. And I know there's one Hernandez Street. I don't know if the county commission, Hidalgo County Commissioner Fuentes has seen that street. I mean, there is too much trash and it's also a Caliche Street. At the time of rain, we're getting so much more rain, you know, and it's gonna get worse, you know. So I would appreciate if you, you know, you all took heart to those of us that live in rural colonias you know, and do something more about our trash that needs to get picked up. And uh, if we can, you know, put containers on our colonias so we could help you help us. And, you know, we all work together and that helps, you know, because I understand there's not enough manpower, you know, to, uh, for the colonias for you all to do that. So we appreciate if you put containers in our colonias so we could ourselves put our trash there or maybe lower prices down on our permits or, you know, doing a, a colonia cleanup at least twice a year. We would really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And that will be it for public forum. Okay. Thank you, sir. Next item is uh, we have a, a couple of resolutions. Would you please read the resolution honoring all our frontline workers and partners during this COVID-19 matter? Good morning, Judge. Yes, I will be reading today's resolution. May I begin? Yes, please. Yes. Thank you. Whereas today marks the 439th day that Hidalgo County has been working under an emergency operation status because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas the Hidalgo County Health and Human Services Department, as well as the Division of Emergency Management, has taken a lead in coordinating local efforts to educate, test, treat, and vaccinate for COVID-19 in the interest of public safety, and whereas a strong regional response has emerged in the form of partnerships to help with ancillary challenges emerging, emerging from the pandemic, including but not limit to, limited to providing emergency food supplies for the food insecure, feeding school children who were forced to stay home, extending internet access to allow children to continue learning from home, providing mortgage and rental assistance, providing small business grants, providing funeral, funeral expenses, and whereas those ch these challenges to the community and to the unified government response to these challenges exemplified what Hidalgo County can accomplish when working toward a common purpose. And whereas entities such as local municipalities and local educational institutions working in tandem with hospitals, medical technicians, first responders, and other healthcare providers for the greater good of Hidalgo County residents and whereas evidence suggesting that Hidalgo County has weathered the worst of this pandemic and that the community is beginning to emerge mostly vaccinated and grateful for the tremendous efforts taken on its behalf by these frontline workers, and whereas the community remains mindful that the threat of COVID-19 still exists, but that with the proper precautions, the foremost one being getting vaccinated, Hidalgo County may actively look to the recovery phase of this emergency. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court acknowledges the power of the region working toward a common purpose and recognizes the tremendous efforts taken in the interest of public safety by frontline workers and first responders, as well as our health care providers. And be, and be it further resolved 
that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court publicly pro proclaims its gratitude for these efforts despite the dangers of this deadly disease on behalf of the residents of Hidalgo County to include but not limited to the following entities. The 22 municipalities of Hidalgo County, the nine hospitals, the 24 educational institutions, and the five other, and five other entities approved this 18th day of May, 2021. Move for approval. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I, I want to congratulate all of the precincts, our health department, all the partners. I mean, it was really a thing of beauty to see our precincts working with the cities, the school districts, volunteers on this uh, vaccination effort. I mean, I, I said it before, Henry Ford would have been very proud of that, of that process. So this is to express gratitude to all those frontline workers and all the volunteers and people involved. Uh, we're, we're on our way to hopefully getting out of this, uh, this mess. So thank you on behalf of a very appreciative uh, community. Judge, uh, I'm honored to <clears throat> accept this resolution on behalf of the so many entities whose sole focus for this past year has been the safety of the residents of Hidalgo County. Yesterday, the number of people hospitalized in Hidalgo County fell below 100. We've had two days in a row that we have below 100. It's been over a year since that number's been that low. I believe that the light at the end of this very dark tunnel is getting brighter and I believe that this community will emerge from this episode more unified because of the efforts of the various entities being recognized in this resolution. Thank you, Judge Commissioners, for your leadership and thank you for your support. Sir, I could tell you, I, no one ever prepared for this. We could, we could, we've exercised it, we've read about it, but the reality is it took a whole community and it took the leadership of commissioner's court and leadership of the elected officials in all our jurisdictions, especially our school districts who are beyond heroes. Our school nurses, our school janitors, our school support, and each and every office here at the, at the commissioner's court and offices at each precinct. Uh, on humbly and on my part, I say thank you to each of you because the light is getting brighter and it is looking more positive. Thank you. Thank you, thank you and your department. Obviously you were, you were the leaders of this effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also have uh, another resolution recognizing the excellence of uh, uh, financial reporting by our Hidalgo County Drainage District. They received the highest award they can for reporting their, their finances. Would you please read the, the resolution? Yes, you, yes, Judge, I will. Uh, whereas the Hidalgo County Drainage District Number 1 received a Certificate of Achievement Award for Outstanding Financial Reporting from the Government Finance Officers Association in Chicago, Illinois for the fiscal year that ended December 31st, 2019, and whereas this certificate of achievement is the highest form of recognition in governmental accounting and financial reporting, and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management. And whereas when a certificate of achievement is awarded to a government, an award of financial reporting achievement is also presented to the individual or individuals or department designated by the government as primarily responsible for its having earned the certificate. Now therefore, be it resolved, that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby congratulates the Hidalgo County D Drainage District Number 1 for this notable achievement for excellence in financial reporting and applauds their standard of excellence in financial reporting. Approved this 18th day of May 2021. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Again, we congratulate the Hidalgo County Drainage District for receiving this high award. Next item, please. This Good morning, uh, Judge, Commissioners. Item uh, 6C, uh, discussion, consideration, approval of the memorandum of understanding between Workforce Solutions and the County of Hidalgo. Um, just requesting approval. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. This is just uh, bringing in an intern. <laughs> Thank you. Next item is uh, item 7A, resolution honoring the uh, Ms. Quintanilla, Paul, are you? 
Good morning, Judge. I'll be also reading okay. the resolution in honor of Ms. Delia Maria Quintanilla for her 31 years of service. Whereas Mrs. Delia Quintanilla is being honored for her exceptional work and dedication to the Hidalgo County Tax Assessor's Collector's Office after serving with distinction and integrity for the past 31 years, and whereas a resident of Alton, she was born to Oscar and Rosa Villegas and is the third of four children. Mrs. Quintanilla is married to Guadalupe Quintanilla and has two children by the names of Rose Marie Villegas and Oscar Mendez, and two grandchildren by the names of Amberly de la Cruz and Ethan de la Cruz. And whereas a graduate of Mission High School, Mrs. Quintanilla took a job with the County of Hidalgo in September of 1990. And whereas a deputy clerk in, a, in and for the County of Hidalgo, State of Texas, Mrs. Quintanilla worked in the Motor Vehicle Division and demonstrated leadership at the Mission Substation, serving through several tax assessor collectors, and currently Pablo Villarreal Jr., Mrs. and currently Pablo Villarreal Jr. Mrs. Quintanilla has been dedicated in her responsibilities and has gone above and beyond to assist the office in any capacity she could. And whereas after serving 31 years, Mrs. Quintanilla looks forward to spending more time with her, with her children, grandchildren, siblings, and other family members. Now therefore be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby recognizes and honors Mrs. Delia Maria Quintanilla for her outstanding service, dedication, and commitment during her 31 years of service to the constituents in Hidalgo County. And this day wishes her a long, healthy, and fruitful retirement. Approved this 18th day of May, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Well, congratulations, Catania. Congratulations. Paul, you're on mute. Paul, you're on mute. Okay. okay, good morning. 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 Morning, Judge Commissioners. It, it's an honor uh, to be here before you, uh, recognizing Ms. Delia M. Quintanilla. She's right here, and I'm going to have her maybe say a few words, but this is her, her, her plaque that we, uh, we're going to give to you. So uh, let me have Ms. Quintanilla say a few words. Uh, I want to thank Just the wait. county for. Uh, allowing me to work uh, so many years. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I will miss, I, I'll miss my coworkers, my friends. Um, and I wanna thank uh, Mr. Trevino, Mr. Morini, Mr. Barrera, especially Mr. Villarreal for, for allowing me being here for a very, very long time. Uh, and I wanna thank the county for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations again, 31 years. That's a, that's a great achievement. We thank you for your service. Congratulations, you. Ms. Quintanilla, uh, for your 31 years of service, and, and uh, we wish you the best. She was from Precinct 3, so uh, very proud of uh, her. She's from the Mission Alton area. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Judge, commissioners, with your permission, uh, Mr. Olivares, uh, uh, I do know has a commitment uh, on behalf of the county. And so uh, could we please take item 13 as we have Mr. Olivares here in, in the audience? Sure, item 13A. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Very quickly here, 13A, discussion and action for Hidalgo County Health and Human Services to coordinate and plan for Operation Lone Star Public Health Care Services with our state and local partners scheduled from July 26th through July 30th. This is a 22nd year of Operation Lone Star for providing services, public health services, uh, here along the, here in Hidalgo County, and we're asking for your permission and support to plan for a modified version. It's not gonna be a full-scale version, but it's gonna be a smaller version of it. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item B is requesting approval to appropriate health administration program income budget in the amount of $110,000 for the period of May 18, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C is C1, requesting approval of the second amendment to the memorandum of agreement from the National Foundation for the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. The purpose of this amendment is to add subsections to the extended termination date to May 31st, 
2022, sir. This is part of that funding that's been uh, allocated to help pay for some of the activity we have in Dick. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is request an approval for Eduardo Olivares, Chief Administrative Officer, or designate to execute any other further instructions, <coughs> instruments, sorry, and documents as are may become necessary to convene to efficiently and carry out the terms of agreement as amended. So this is just requesting permission for myself to have permission to have access to approve any amendments made to this grant. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you very much. Have a good Thank day. Thank you, We're back to item 8A. Good morning, Commissioners. Judge Cortez, Rosalinda Cantu presenting for the District Attorney's Office, item 8A, the DA Victim Assistance Program Grant Fund 1281. We're asking for approval to submit a VAP grant number 292-4303 budget adjustment to the Office of the Governor. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. 9A, Constable Precinct 2. Judge Commissioners, with your permission, I'll present for uh, Constable Precinct 2. It's discussion, consideration, approval for employee number 235431 and employee number 227560 to be paid out for accrued annual compensatory uh, time and holiday leave while employed under the Texas Tropical Behavioral Health Program. This is a, uh, these were uh, grant positions. The employees have transferred to a constable precinct to full-time position. All the appropriate uh, backup uh, was attached. Motion to approve. All there. I have a motion. <coughs> Excuse me. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item 10A, constable precinct 5. Yeah, do you want to take that? Judge Commissioners, with your permission, uh, Constable Precinct 5, uh, Constable Marichalan, this is fiscal year 2021 click it or ticket, grant 1284. It's authorization approved to apply and accept for the step uh, uh, click it or ticket 2021 grant with the Texas Department of Transportation from May 21st, 2021 through June 9th, 2021. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> Second action item would uh, be authorization for Chief Galvan to e sign the grant agreement. So moved. Mo Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Item three would be the authorization to pay overtime reimbursable under the grant terms and conditions. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. The last item for Constable 5 is approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor for fiscal year 2021 step click it or ticket in the amount of $5,108 and appropriation of same. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item 11A. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Erika Reina for the Department of Human Resources. Item 11A, I'm requesting a waiver of the following if applicable for the personnel items listed. I need action on item number three, the budget amendment policy, personnel related amendments. So motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item 11B for the district attorney's office. Approval of the following personnel actions effective upon commissioner's court approval. Delete slot 0161, a courier grade three, and create slot 0195, a legal assistant one grade six, this position will be assisting the district attorney's office with the misdemeanor division, and I do recommend approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 11C for Precinct 2 Road and Bridge Fund. Approval of the following personnel actions effective upon commissioner's court approval. Create slot 0027, a program manager 1, grade 13. This is due to a current reorganization taking place at Precinct 2, and I do recommend approval. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much, you. sir. Urban County, Mr. Avila. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. For item 12A, uh, the Urban County Program is requesting County Commissioners Court approval of the following civil rights requirements for the Texas Community Development Block Grant Program from the Texas Department of Agriculture regarding contract number 721-9133 
for A, Section 3 policy, B, excessive force policy, C, Section 504 policies and grievance procedures, D, the fair housing policy, E, citizen participation plan with compliant procedures, and F, designation for a civil rights officer. And for item 12, two, consideration and approval of a resolution regarding the civil rights for the Texas CDBG Emergency Assistance Self-Help Center program, contract number 721-9133. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. Did we do? Uh, We've done uh, eight, item 13, A, B, and C. We have uh, item 14, veteran services. Item 14A, veteran services. Mr. Rodriguez, Felix. Uh, you know, we're requesting um, item 14A, A180712. The Texas Veterans Commission Broken Arrow Grant 1283, we're requesting approval uh, and acceptance of budget amendment approved by the Texas Veterans Commission on April the 12th of 2021 in relation to the Broken Arrow Grant. And uh, item two, approval of an interdepartmental transfer. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Planning and Department. Good morning, uh, Judge Commissioners TJ Arredondo with the Planning Department. Item 15A, discussion, consideration, and action uh, or possible action to approve an order abandoning a 40-foot wide road, county road, appearing on the plat of the resubdivision of lots 1 through 5 through 32, inclusive of the, of the San Juan Plantation subdivision, in addition to Hidalgo County, Texas, as per map recorded in Volume 3, page 52 of the map records of Hidalgo County. This has been reviewed by the precinct and the uh, and council. We're recommending approval. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnaldo. Precinct 4, Commissioner Culver. Good morning, Dr. Culbertson with Precinct 4. Agenda <coughs> item 80820, requesting approval to rescind action taken by Commissioner's Court on May 4th, 2021 for Health Education and Literacy Initiative HEAL under the Hidalgo County Literacy Program as authorized under Section 381.004B6 of the Texas Local Government Code. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Requesting approval or revised Health Education and Literacy Initiative HEAL under the Hidalgo County Literacy Program as authorized under Section 381.004B6 of the Texas Local Government Code. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. <coughs> Office of Budget and Management. Sergio. Morning. Morning, Judge Commissioners. Sergio Drew, Department of Budget Management. Item 17A is a presentation and discussion on the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. Uh, Judge Commissioners, uh, I'd like to, to share the screen and uh, uh, present to you the presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief. I just want to start the discussion on uh, on the American Rescue Plan uh, Act and and the use of those funds. Uh, again, uh, real quick, the, the law was enacted back in March 10th uh, of this year. It was signed into law uh, by President Biden the next day on March 11th. Um, it does provide for uh, funding for state and local governments under the coronavirus state and local recovery funds. Uh, right now, the allocation for Hidalgo County is uh, $212.9 uh, million. Uh, it will be uh, uh, submitted to the county in two different uh, uh, tranches. Uh, one will be uh, this year uh, after we submit the request for funds. And then uh, the other half uh, would be uh, a year from now. Uh, after after we, a year after we received the, the first allocation, just really quick as far as on on the, <clears throat> the act, we did receive interim final uh, rules. Uh, they were issued back in May 10th of this year. There is a 60-day comment period uh, to the U.S. Treasury so that uh, they can make any adjustments to, to those final rules. 
Uh, again, the cover, cover period for uh, the funds is going to be beginning on March 3rd of 2021 through December 31st of 2024. Uh, unless otherwise noted, there are some exceptions to that period uh, when it comes to premium pay uh, and then on the calculation of, of lost revenues. Uh, again, th these funds, uh, the cost must be incurred by December 31st, 2024, but we all actually have uh, another two years. They must be expended by December 31st of 2026. So we just have to uh, make sure we have the, the cost incurred. We have a purchase order for uh, any of the projects that we have by December 31st, 2024. Obviously, we want to devise a plan to where we're, we're not uh, uh, spending these funds that late in, in this program, but uh, we do have up until that point. Uh, some things that we cannot use it for is going to be for uh, funding our pension fund. Uh, we cannot make any extraordinary deposits into our pension fund uh, or TCDRS. Uh, and then we cannot use this for, for uh, it cannot be used as a non-federal match for other federal programs. Uh, as far as on the eligible expenditures uh, that we're allowed to use, there are four main categories. Uh, first one's COVID-19 uh, or negative economic impact. The COVID-19 or negative economic impact is going to be similar to the, uh, the allowable uses under the CARES Act. Um, pretty much all of those uses are going to be allowable for uh, the American uh, Rescue Plan funds. It does allow for uh, other uh, items, which are going to be the premium pay for essential workers. It will allow for the recruitment of lost revenues. Uh, and it will allow for investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Uh, and of course, broadband infrastructure was, was an item that was included in the CARES Act uh, as well. Uh, for for COVID-19 uh, eligible expenditures, uh, some, of, some of the main items are going to be containing and mitigating the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, which are going to be for vaccine programs, PPE, uh, uh, enhancing public health data systems, which we started uh, with the CARES Act. Uh, we, we started looking at electronic medical records, uh, electronic um, scheduling systems for the vaccines. Uh, it'll also allow for capital investments in public facilities to meet pandemic operations needs. Uh, such as to any improvements to our emergency operations center uh, and then also our stockpile facility as well. Uh, it also allows for behavioral health care needs uh, for mental health and substance abuse treatment, crisis intervention hotlines, and then of course any services that will promote access to other social services for the residents of Hidalgo County. Uh, also covered is going to be payroll benefits, uh, payroll and benefits for public health public safety, human services, and similar employees. Again, these uh, are going to be eligible to the extent that the work completed was for COVID-19 response and mitigation. Uh, and they, they do allow uh, for administrative convenience that public health and safety workers, uh, that, that we can use the funds to cover the full payroll and covered benefits of those employees uh, or operating units or divisions primarily dedicated to COVID-19 response. This is a little uh, different from what we had under CARES where all of them, any public safety, public health uh, worker was, uh, we were allowed to presume that 100% of their uh, work was for COVID-19 response. Here it will be, uh, they do have to be primarily dedicated for it. And, but uh, for administrative convenience, we can assign divisions within departments that are gonna be responding to COVID-19. Uh, similar to, to the individuals that are working the vaccine clinics at the health departments, uh, and then also any constable or sheriff staff that are doing enforcement of orders. Um, we, we could uh, devise or, or uh, put them into some type of task force to where we can uh, reimburse 100% uh, of their salaries. Uh, uh, barring from that, we would have to have some type of, of DAR or some other type of mechanism to be able to track the COVID-19 uh, response and mitigation work uh, and, and their regular work. And as far as on the negative economic impact, uh, it does allow for us to, to uh, pay for uh, some of the impacted industries such as tourism, travel, and hospitality. We are allowed to provide grants uh, for these types of industries um, and, th and that those fundings can be used for a myriad of, of things uh, to improve ventilation, uh, physical barrier, barrier to partitions, uh, signage to facilitate social distancing, distancing and uh, 
course, revision of masks and other PPE. Uh, we're also allowed for uh, the rebuilding of the public sec sector capacity to pre-pandemic levels, <clears throat> which uh, if, if we had any uh, layoffs uh, as a result of, of the pandemic, we are allowed to use some of these funds to, to bring back staffing levels to, to 100%. Uh, and one thing that we will be uh, recommending to the court to use is gonna be to reimburse, uh, replenish our uh, unemployment uh, trust fund. Uh, we will have increased cost and unemployment uh, for the next uh, several quarters, uh, which is what's projected by the Texas Workforce Commission. So we would be recommending the court to, to maybe allocate some funds for that. Uh, we're also allowed to, to provide for small business uh, support, uh, be able to provide grants, loans, uh, in-kind assistance, and then also develop counseling programs uh, to be able to, to rebound for from the from the downturn of the pandemic, uh, be able to support small businesses. <clears throat> it also allows for hard hit communities, which is gonna be the investing in housing and communities, uh, and also allows for addressing disparities in education. As far as premium pay for essential workers, uh, the recovery funds do allow uh, for us to use this for recipients, uh, allow us to provide premium pay uh, up to $13 per hour to eligible workers performing essential work during the COVID-19 public health emergency. It also allows us to provide grants to third party employers uh, for, for their eligible workers performing essential work. Um, as defined under the, the regulations, uh, essential work is work involving regular in-person interactions and regular physical handling of items that were also handled by others. Uh, the, the worker would not be engaged in essential work and accordingly may not receive premium pay for telework. So for the period that, that our employees uh, were engaged in telework, uh, that would not uh, qualify as essential work and, and for those hours would not be eligible for, for any type of premium pay. This is one of the exceptions that, it, that uh, the timeline does allow for. This can be uh, paid retroactively. So uh, it can be paid retroactive to the beginning of the pandemic, which was back in January uh, 2021. Uh, and also uh, as a commissioner's court, you would be able to designate who uh, those essential workers would be for, for our county. And then if we we're gonna be providing third party grants you would also be able to designate the sectors uh, that would be eligible for, for this type of premium pay. <clears throat> the third item was gonna be for the recruitment of revenues. Uh, the recruitment of revenues uh, will, will be calculated based on the last fiscal year before the pandemic. For us, that would be the fiscal year ended December 31st, 2019. Uh, and then every year uh, at the end of our fiscal year, which, which actually is a calendar year, at the end of December 31st, we would be able to calculate based on actual revenues, compare that to the baseline of, of 2019 uh, to be able to calculate uh, the lost revenues. Uh, the the uh, guidelines do allow for us to apply a 4.1 growth rate uh, to the revenues of, of, of the county, or we can use the actual three-year average prior to the pandemic. Uh, I, I, did a quick calculation on, on our end, we were roughly about 3.9%. Uh, so we would be allowed to use the greater of, of either. So we would probably use the 4.1. Uh, again, I still need to, to verify that and then uh, have somebody review it maybe at the auditor's office to be able to make sure um, th that we're using the correct uh, growth rate. As far as on, on these lost revenues, there are uh, allowable uses for that. Uh, and, and it's basically any governmental service that the county provides, um, we can use these, these lost revenues for, um, for maintenance of buildings, uh, cybersecurity, any health care, public health, public safety, um, sanitation expenditures, any, any real um, program that we uh, are currently operating, we're able to use this does now allow us to use it for debt service or for uh, replenishing the rainy day fund. Uh, so these are gonna have to be actual expenditures that the county makes uh, for any services that they provide. <clears throat> and the final one was gonna be for water, sewer and broadband infrastructure. Again, for water and sewer, uh, the county does not operate any water or sewer uh, you know, programs, uh, but we will be able to use it for broadband infrastructure it does target uh, households and businesses that, that cannot, are currently not delivering more than 25 megabytes per second. 
download or three megabytes per second upload speeds. Um, we can uh, do uh, broadband projects. Uh, and again, there is a minimum requirement of 100 megabyte uh, download and upload speeds uh, for any new projects that we uh, undertake, unless it's, uh, there's a reason why, uh, based on geography, topography, or just excess costs that makes it impractical for us to, to be able to provide those speeds. Uh, and then also they do encourage us to, to, to work with uh, the state and then other local partners that, that may receive funds from the Capital Projects Fund uh, under, under, otherwise under the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, as far as next steps, we do need to supply, uh, do need to submit the request for recovery funds via the U.S. Treasury. Uh, they have a, a new ID me portal uh, that will be uh, submitting the request uh, for these uh, recovery funds. Uh, and then I will be recommending to the court that we do assign some uh, work group. Uh, to be able to develop a recovery plan and performance indicators uh, as a as an entity uh, greater than 250,000 in population, we are required uh, to provide a recovery plan and performance uh, report. Uh, our first one will be due August 31st, and, and this would be a quarterly report that we would have to submit to the U.S. Treasury, in addition to the cost reports that we currently do, uh, some of the CARES. This one would actually be a recovery plan and a performance report uh, listing the, the performance indicators and, and what goals we're trying to meet and, and how we're doing. Um, I'll stop the presentation. I don't know if any of the court has any questions. Uh, again, this is going to be the beginning of, of uh, I believe, a series of workshops and uh, other meetings that we'll need to have to be able to, to efficiently and effectively administer the funds of the American Rescue Plan. Sergio, if you will, on the comment period, if you could clarify for infrastructure, it says water and sewer, you know, does it say anything about storm sewer? Can we get clarification on that? Because that is an important yes, part sure. of the infrastructure. Uh, I, I didn't see anything on, on storm sewer, but we'll, we'll certainly send uh, a question to, to the U.S. Treasury uh, via their, their portal and uh, request information regarding that. It would also be helpful to hear um, some interpretation versus about sanitation and waste pickup? Uh, there wasn't anything specifically on the, on the, uh, <clears throat> on the guidance regarding that. However, uh, on the recruitment of revenues, we are allowed to be able to use for, for any type of sanitation expenditure, any uh, governmental function that we perform, we're allowed to use uh, those lost revenues uh, for those services. It, it also includes roads, uh, and, and other other programs that the county uh, operates. Thank you. Okay, there are no actions required on, on that. Uh, again, uh, as I mentioned, we will be probably be having a, a series of workshops regarding that and, and developing our performance plan uh, as it relates to the use of American Rescue Plan Act funds. Item 17A2 is approval to submit a request for the coronavirus state and local recovery funds. We do recommend approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Item 17B, a presentation and discussion on the Hidalgo County Section 125 Voluntary Insurance Products RFP timeline. I'm also going to share my screen real quick on that. Uh, Judge Commissioners, uh, <clears throat> we did begin uh, the process of, of the 2021 Voluntary Products RFP. Uh, we did have our first meeting last Thursday with the uh, grading committee that was assigned by the Commissioner's Court to review the draft RFP that was prepared uh, by the Purchasing Department and our Employee Benefits Division here at, at Department of Budget and Management. Uh, we will be having uh, a second meeting uh, this Thursday uh, to, to sort of go over uh, some of the proposed changes that we discussed on Thursday. Uh, and then we uh, expect the evaluation committee to submit their final RFP uh, revisions by next Tuesday, the 25th, uh, and present the RFP for court approval on June 1st. Uh, as soon as we get the, the final revisions from the committee, uh, 
Uh, next week, we'll, we will forward the draft RFP over to uh, the commissioner's courts for y'all's review uh, in, in anticipation of court approval on June 1st. Uh, throughout the month of June, we will be doing the advertisements, uh, responses to any questions uh, that any of the respondents might have. Uh, and then we hope to, to receive those uh, responses, uh, the proposals back by June 28th. Um, on June 13th, we have it a uh, timeline that we would bring back any responses that do not meet the, the minimum specifications uh, for courts review, so either accepting, waiving, uh, some, uh, waiving some of the uh, technicalities or rejecting some of those bids. Uh, <clears throat> and then before we begin the, the review process by the evaluation committee, which we have slated for uh, July 14th, 15th, and 16th, this is a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, we hope to get the, the graders evaluation sheets by the end of July, and then bring back for court approval uh, the, the award of the voluntary products on August 10th. Um, again, th this is important so that we can be able to begin the open enrollment um, uh, early in, in September, on September 13th. Uh, and then be able to complete uh, enrollment by October 13th. We do want to provide employees, you know, uh, ample time to be able to to select their voluntary products uh, for this uh, next fiscal year. Uh, we will be having a series of presentations for uh, departments and employees regarding the, the voluntary products. Uh, make sure that all the employees understand each of the products um, and we will be having those uh, both virtually and we will have in-person uh, presentations just to, to make our employees uh, more aware of, of the benefits that they have available to them. So do you be, Arno, do have any questions regarding that? Will you be adding that, uh, that timeline to the agenda because it wasn't attached before? I apologize, Commissioner. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll include that in, in the agenda. I'll send that over to, to Monica to, for attachment. And I'll email a copy of, of the timeline to each of the members as well. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> again, that doesn't require any, any action, it's just a presentation only. Uh, moving over to item 17C is approval of Edna's administrative uh, services only fee waiver in the amount of $200,000. We do recommend approval. So moved. Second. How, how did you determine that to be a, a fair? Compensation for the service of the provider is that, or was that a contractual agreement? No, uh, we actually visited with uh, Gallagher Insurance. We did an analysis of of the um, uh, as the court had recommended that for us to go out for to, to to start looking at the possibility of whether we should or shouldn't go out for bids for uh, for the TPA services uh, for uh, the year 2022. Uh, so Gallagher did an analysis based on, on comparable uh, uh, our proposals that they had received recently. Uh, and based on that, uh, we sort of uh, determined that there was very little um, possibility of us, us saving any funds or saving any money or uh, cost in, in going out for bids early. Uh, so we... Uh, Gallagher went and uh, negotiated with Edna uh, sort of a fee wa waiver as opposed to going out for bids and Edna did agree to that. Uh, so we did, uh, we are presenting that to the courts for court's approval. Uh, Sector, I was not aware of that. I, re I retract my uh, uh, second to that motion. I don't agree with that. I said that we had discussed that we were gonna go out for bid and how do you know that there's no uh, savings if you don't have any other bids from any other company? But that's all I have. Yeah. Commissioner, uh, basically what, what our consultant did was went and looked at comparable bids that were received recently uh, and, and then applied it to our uh, claims history. Uh, and, and they determined that there would be roughly about 400,000 in possible savings just on claims. However, uh, the, the, the vendor that, that we had those savings on uh, we know from past experiences on the um, on the stop loss uh, payments that those costs are usually uh, in excess uh, than other uh, the other vendors. 
So that's why we went back and, and negotiated with Aetna to see if we can get an additional fee waiver um, and sort of guaranteed at least uh, that savings. Can you discuss this, Commissioner Fuentes, or no? I think it's always been safe for me to participate. I think that's what legal counsel has said, but I've always deferred um, just because of conflicts. Can you, can you or can you not? I can. But the, the item that's before the court is whether or not to accept this particular waiver for our current vendor, which you have no conflict with at this time. Isn't that correct? I believe so. So then as to this item, there is no no conflict. You can discuss and participate. I, I understand both both sides. Um, with respect to if they've compared to similar similar contracts, um, seems to be kind of in the middle of the road. Uh, but you you do have to consider it. it within that scope of the stop loss uh, because we, we would just be offsetting one for the other. So if you were to look at it as a package and look at all of it combined, then it may make a little bit more sense. Um. Just for sure, yes. I mean, we did look at, at that as well. Um, and then uh, again, there's always uh, the disruption uh, when, when you do change, uh, and again, that do, that doesn't mean that we wouldn't stay with the same the same provider. We we just uh, when we looked at it and in consultation with our, our consultant, uh, Mr. Lou Arias, you know, we, we came to, to the recommendation that it would be uh, most advantageous for us to to accept the waiver and not go out for bids. But again, it, it is up to the court uh, and the court's wish as far as whether they they would still like for us to go out for bids or, or accept this uh, fee waiver. Uh, but, but we're looking at it from a high high up here. You're looking at it with more detail. That's why I, I want to feel comfortable that this is a good decision. And, and that's why I'm, that's why I defer to Sergio because he's in the weeds, I'm not. Yeah. And so if he recommends it, I, I'm, that's why I made a motion. But if it's the wishes of the, of the court to consider other options, I'm fine. I'm sorry. Judge but Commissioner, we aren't that far uh, if you like as well, we, we could uh, bring this item back not, next week or at the I next commissioner's court meeting and have Mr. Adias present uh, to maybe answer more questions or maybe we can uh, that, that we could be, have that if, if that's what the court's wish. Sergio, that may be a better option as far as just you know, no actioning this for this week and maybe bring it back for discussion next week with a little bit more explanation as to or background as to how this figure was arrived at and then what our options are with moving forward because the way it's written out here we're talking about one simple thing and not in the context of the entire scope of insurance services and providing uh, the coverage for our employees which I think has become more comprehensive I think last oh year God. compared you know when we went out for this process uh, we added so many services and we really promoted teledoc and we had to really accommodate what you know COVID threw us into but it also so I think in keeping the costs the same, because I think from a budget standpoint and cost perspective, we're roughly right at 100% or just under 100% in claims experience, which as if you can break even in this insurance world and, and health mm -hmm. and utilization, and yes, we have to consider the good and the bad of COVID. But if we're going to talk about it in the grand scheme of whether we're going to go out for bid, then I think we need to look at it from a, a much higher level, Judge. I agree with you on that. And look at all of it combined and see how it how it shakes out, uh, because yeah. I, th this is just one element of the entire uh, of the entire body of work that we should be looking at. So, if that's the case and we're able to push this back one week, Sergio, then then let's do that and try to give us uh, get Gallagher to give us a more comprehensive breakdown of how this fee would waiver would fit into the entire uh, body of work with respect to insurance and health insurance, including all the different uh, components, which would include your stop loss and all the other uh, pharmaceuticals and everything else that we consider as major medical. Yes, Commissioner, definitely, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, we'll, we'll bring this item then back next week and I'll get with Mr. Arias to make sure that he's gonna be able to, uh, to be available to present to the court as well. 
You okay with that, Commissioner? Uh, so we'll no action, uh, item 17C. Uh, moving to item 17D, uh, so, is going to be approval of 2021 second. appropriation of funds from the Road and Bridge Unassigned Fund Balance uh, for the Precinct 4 Road and Bridge Fund in the amount of $1,894,832.97. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Let the record judge. show we took no action on item 17C. Right, judge, and I was going to say, so for the record, uh, Commissioner Vidal uh, withdrew his second thereby leaving uh, no second for, for, for a vote, and then, uh, and then right, and then no action for, for next week. Well, I can pull back my motion. I, I, you know it what, could you please, yeah. Commissioner, Thank please, you. if you could withdraw your, your yeah, motion as well. My motion. Okay, and that would fall in line with the, uh, with the no action then thereafter. Okay, thank you. Sorry for jumping this procedural okay. step. Thank uh, you, Judge, Commissioners. Yeah. Thank you, Sergio. Very, very uh, aggressive. Item 18, uh, 18A. You're on mute. You're on mute, Denny. Ms. Dina, you're on mute. Okay, there we go. Good morning. Good morning. Dina Camillo for the Purchasing Department. Agenda item 18A1, presentation of Consider Me, an in-house developed application, a vendor enrollment solution. Judge Commissioners, I'm excited to announce the implementation of an online vendor enrollment titled Consider Me. This application was developed at no cost to the county through the talent of our employees from the purchasing department and the IT department. This application will allow interested vendors to register their business online while eliminating manual procedures and reducing setup time, thus increasing our efficiency and productivity. All county departments will be given access to Consider Me, allowing them to search for vendors by types of goods or services. And to assist in building this database, departments will, uh, will also have the option to share the online vendor registration link with any prospective vendors from them for them to submit their registration form. This application will allow the purchasing department to increase participation and expand equal opportunity for all our vendors. Uh, we began beta testing in March and now we're ready to launch. If you will allow me to share my screen, we have a presentation that will showcase a brief overview of this application. The Hidalgo County Purchasing Department is excited to announce the launch of Consider Me, a vendor enrollment solution. Consider Me allows vendors to register online, get listed as a potential vendor, and be considered for Hidalgo County projects. Consider Me is an innovative tool that facilitates the needs of the county to secure qualified vendors by building a better, transparent relationship with local, state, and national vendors. Applying is easy. Vendors can access Consider Me through the Hidalgo County website. Under purchasing, vendors can select to enroll or view currently enrolled vendors. To enroll, vendors simply complete the online form, attach their W-9, and submit the application for review. Once approved, the company name and services offered are displayed on the Hidalgo County website. The public vendors and county departments can now view and search for prospective vendors. Consider Me allows the county departments to quickly view prospective vendor information and request Alio setup from the auditor's office. As you can see, Consider Me provides a convenient way for qualified local, state, and national vendors to do business with Hidalgo County. Lastly, we're ready to assist departments with training to ensure a smooth transition. This afternoon, we're going to distribute a bulletin with further instructions on what to do to activate an account. Judge Commissioners, before we go on to our next item, we would like to extend our appreciation to the IT department and the auditor's office for their collaboration in the development of this application 
as well as those departments that assisted us during the testing period. So recognized. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you have any if you don't have any questions, I can go on to the next item. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Item 18-2A, requesting approval of the RFP procurement packet for the disaster recovery services, debris, clearance, removal, and other miscellaneous related services with authority to advertise and re-advertise if necessary, subject to modifications by the Chiefs of Staff and the Emergency Management Coordinator and subject to legal review. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, requesting the designation of the, of the Evaluation Committee to review score and grade the submitted responses for the above mentioned project. My Chief, Mayor Suarez, for me. Maldurosa. Isaac Sulemana. Martin Garza. Dr. Culberson. Make a motion to approve of the appointments as presented. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. 18B1A for the Health and Human Services. Acceptance and approval of the Hidalgo County Biosafety Lab schematic design presented by contracted architect ERO. ERO. Arctic, 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 oh my gosh. Help me. Architects. <laughs> Architects. Yes. <laughs> Including cost increase due to escalating material cost. You know, I'm the one supposed to get senior moments. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, pretty understandable considering the market as it is right now. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Item B, requesting approval to proceed to design development Good. phase and the purchasing department to issue and send notice to proceed to ER, ERO architects. Motion to approve. Second. You have a question? No, I was just going to say that, 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 that even though the futures for, for, for lumber are, are coming down, so I think that by the time we really start building this thing, I think prices are going to come down. We have a motion and a second. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next item, acceptance and a, and a proposal for additional professional services for utility infrastructure and approval of amendment number two from ERO Architects in connection with the construction of the Hidalgo County Biosafety Lab. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the next item, acceptance of proposal and approval of amendment number three from Project Architect Rofa for additional engineering services for Platte Division and Survey in connection with Precinct 4 Justice Center project. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Item 18D, uh, this is this should really be listed on the, under countywide. It's a countywide item. Acceptance and approval of supplemental agreement number one for services under work authorization number two for HAP Associates Inc. to include additional engineering services resulting in an estimated cost increase in the amount of 8,231 for the electrical system renovations at county owned buildings project. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yeah, this is real important. We don't do this with to be out of business very quickly. Item 18E for precinct three, requesting approval of change order number one, which results in a cost savings for rim construction inc for the Hidalgo County Precinct Three Mile Three North project, uh, as agreed upon by all parties and subject to receipt of text dot letter of concurrence. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, 18F for precinct four, A, requesting approval to subcontract half Associates Inc. for survey, sur for survey services for design renovation and construction of Pueblo de Palmas Park project. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, requesting approval of supplemental agreement number one to work authorization number one with Chinese Engineering LLC 
for the design, renovation, and construction of Pueblo de Palmas Park in Precinct 4 to include service services with an increase of 3,200. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 18G for the county clerk requesting approval for Arturo, Mr. Arturo Guajardo or designated, count, designated county clerk personnel to execute the application with Sorenson to obtain video relay services. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Okay. Bradley? Judge Commissioners, uh, under uh, under item 19A1, there's no action to be taken this week. Uh, under item 19A2, emergency situations occurring since last agenda meeting, Judge Commissioners, uh, I think it's important that we bring up or, or I bring up uh, the potential for severe weather uh, that, uh, that may be coming our way. Uh, and so with that being said, uh, uh, we're going to ask our residents uh, through our social media outlets uh, to please stay tuned and uh, uh, please look out for the weather updates from the National Weather Service as well as information uh, from the county with respect to services, uh, potential for, for uh, the uh, severe weather, uh, sandbag distributions, uh, if that may be the case with respect to the precincts. Uh, again, all we're asking is for our constituents to please be aware uh, and stay tuned or, 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 or stay tuned in uh, to the uh, to our local channels uh, for weather updates. Uh, and as I said, uh, we will be posting uh, information on our website and through our social media sites, uh, weather updates uh, for the next two days. Uh, and again, uh, if there's any questions uh, with respect to uh, services, uh, there, there, there will be uh, phone, uh, phone numbers that the residents can call in for additional information. Uh, well, just Commission. to explain, expand on that for a second. You know, I think all of us have Facebook pages and at our precinct levels, you know, we're, we'll probably be posting if we're going to be doing sandbags, uh, things like that. We're working with emergency management and all our chiefs of staff are working to coordinate that. So please be mindful of that. Uh, keep up to date with all of those services that we'll provide. But also, just like you were talking about I illegal dumping over there in, com in precinct three commission, you know, as best as we can, if we can have people try to keep their right of way, the covert pipes and the fire ditches clean. Uh, so that water can continue to flow. We know there's a lot of brush out there because of the storms that we've endured over the last couple of weeks. You know, high winds knocked a lot of tree limbs down. So there's a lot of brush out there. We can't possibly pick it up fast enough. As best as you can, if we can keep that out of the bar ditching to let the water continue to pop positive flow, what we don't want is for that water to accumulate and sit there and then potentially cause structural damage. So as much as we can, try to keep your, the pathways clean for water to continue to flow. So item 19B, Judge Commissioners, I'd like to take, for the court to take actions is ratification of Texas Water Code Section 15.005, memorandum, memorandum, memorandum of understanding between the city of La Villa and Hidalgo County. Did we get everything cleared up with the drainage district? Yes, sir, we got everything cleared up with the drainage district. We got uh, the information from the city of La Villa. Uh, I worked with the drainage district. Uh, they were okay with it. And this is, again, uh, under Section 15.005. This is one of the requirements uh, that they go uh, okay. to the uh, to the county seat, uh, sure. and so uh, again, while this was done last week, uh, I'm asking court to ratify the action that we took. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Judge Commissioners, I'm going to ask to go to closed session, uh, and then we'll come back to item 20 and the and the balance of the court uh, okay. agenda items. Pursuant to Chapter 551 of the Texas Government of the Code. Code section 551.071.072.074.087 will be retiring to closed session to discuss those items. Any action items to be taken will be taken in open session when we return. I've got 1131. May we adjourn to closed session? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Okay, we're back from executive session. It's uh, 36 minutes after noon. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Um, under open session, item 23A, real estate acquisition and appropriation for same. There's no action to be taken today. 23B, pending under potential litigation, there's no action to be taken today. 
23C, discussion, consideration of possible action regarding response to public health emergency, judge commissioners. Uh, I will refer back to item 20 in a minute or so. <clears throat> item 23D, deliberation regarding the following economic development negotiations pursuant to chapter 551, Texas government code, section 551.087, project camp, uh, which proceed as directed. Item 23E, claim of E. De la, uh, Alma, E. De La Rosa. Judge commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $1,320.92. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Judge commissioners, item, uh, agenda item 24, there is no action to be taken. There's no need to go back to close. Item 25, open session, there is no action to be taken. Judge commissioners, I'd like to refer back to item 20, or I'm sorry, um, for the record, item 22A, there is no action to be taken, and 22B, there is no action to be taken this week. Item 20, discussion, consideration, possible action regarding A, county response to disaster health emergency. One, CARES Act funds, there's no action to be taken this week. 20B, measures necessary to preserve public health and safety. There's no specific item to be taken uh, action to be taken this week, judge commissioners. And item 20C is direction regarding county government operations, including but not limited to essential functions. Judge commissioners, as we have been doing for quite some time, week in and week out, we continue to follow our CDC recommended guidelines, facial coverings, hand sanitizing. Uh, we, been, we continue to work with our facilities department to address any situations dealing with COVID the health and safety of our residents while doing business with the county is first and foremost, as well as our employees providing that service. Uh, judge commissioners, um, again, under the uh, CDC uh, recommended guidelines, I know that there's been updates to the CD recommended guidelines. And so, judge commissioners, I don't know if you have any comments. Sure, in, uh, in light of the, the new CDC guidelines on recommending uh, you know, mask use and this kind of stuff, uh, I've discussed it with uh, Dr. Melendez and Elio Duvales from our health department to see what the recommendations were with respect to county buildings. Uh, it's been uh, been recommended, you know, by them that at least in all of our clinics in the, in, our, in our county, because sick people uh, go there, that, that we require masks with regards to other other buildings that the county operates in. It's recommended that that to um, be able to uh, allow uh, not using the mask if you've been vaccinated, but if you haven't been vaccinated to, to go ahead and use a mask for, for obvious reasons, that is a recommendation. Uh, we're going to have an, a special meeting probably Friday to take action on those matters. So we've asked all the commissioners to, uh, to, to, to be ready to debate it on the next meeting and take action. But, those are, those are the recommendations that we're, we're going to be making with regard to mask use in our building. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Judge Commissioners, um, we do have adjournment. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much.